Alright, welcome back to the Supercoach Nuff channel. In this video, we're going to look at our round 13 review. So, uh, the first big buy round for the season. Uh, so, a lot of activity in terms of trades and whatnot. Um, so, as usual with our re uh, preview, sorry, I think I said review before. <laughs> round 13 preview. Um, so, as usual, we'll start off by looking at the most popular trades. And so, I've gone with the traded ins first. Uh, and at the top of the list, we've got Damien Cook. So, Obviously, a big surprise that he wasn't named in origin. Um, for New South Wales, even on the bench, uh, going with a one-hooker rotation there. So given the fact that he's available this week, he's also available around 19, assuming that um, you know the New South Wales side doesn't dramatically change. Um, yeah, I can understand why he's the most popular trade in this week, um, particularly at that price. That is a pretty nice price now that I've looked at it. <laughs> Um, Toe Harris is number two on the list, so dual position, solid base, um, yeah, big minutes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you haven't got him in, you, you could have him and hold him for the rest of the season. Be like Damien Cook will play the round 19 by as well, so a really handy option. Number three on the list, Kalen Ponga, so obviously coming off a big game last week, also moving back to the fullback position. Um, which, you know, could potentially uh, increase his attacking output. Uh, will mean he's doing less defence, though, so it is a bit of a high-risk, high-reward, but I think given the... I think he's got a negative break-even, um, and obviously, you know, he's going to make a bit of money this week. Um, he's, a, he's a pretty good option, I think, uh, to, uh, at fullback, or even if you wanted to play him at 5-8. Uh, uh, Jermaine Hopgood. So, number four on the list, and I mean, you know, what we said about Terry Harris probably applies here with Hopgood. Um, and given the injury to Ryan Madison, you know, we know how well Hopgood went at the start of the year when Madison wasn't playing. So, um, and, you know, sort of vulturing some minutes there in the lock forward position. So, yeah, I think if you're looking for a out-and-out second row option, Hopgood's probably there. You could have Tohu as well, but, you know, you might have him in the front row already. Uh, Jermaine Asako at number five, so goal kicking uh, winger for the, the Dolphins. Um, yeah, scores tries. You know, he's probably put a little bit more effort into you know things like runs and stuff as well. Um, yeah, so I guess particularly if you're a bit like myself and was looking to target Lockwood Miller and you want a similar style of play, if you haven't got Ruben Garrick, obviously get Ruben Garrick in. Uh, but after that, Jermaine Asako is probably the next best shout in that centre wing position. Cody Nikarima at number six. So, you know, he's going to make a bit of money coming off quite a big score last week. He's playing fullback, which, um, you know, presents its own opportunities in terms of things like runs um, and, and still that ability to make those attacking stats. Um and also the fact that he's moved to fullback means Milford's moved to 5'8", so there's less stress about him uh, maybe not playing the full 80. So if you are looking for a cheap option at 5'8", or even hooker, you know, you can't quite afford a Damien Cook, Cody Nicarima, another great option. So many good options. I don't disagree with too many of these so far. Uh, I can see one maybe coming up. Uh, Josh Schuster, so number seven on the list. You know, again, coming off a big score. Um, you know, you, you've missed a fair bit of his cash rise, but, you know, you'll get a bit more this week. They do have the buy next week. Um, but particularly given there's not a lot of cheapy options in the second row uh, this week, if you do need to downgrade in that position, I think uh, Schuster is still the play, even at that elevated price. Um, but, yeah, if you've had him since the start of the season, like myself, you're actually yeah, cheering that he's got some points on in the bank. Mitchell Moses at number eight. So this is the one I do disagree with um, out of the, the 10 there. Um, you know, unless you're, you're burning trades to trade out Cleary or Hines, but with the intention of bringing them back next week, you know, the question is how sustainable is that given that there's three games of origin coming up? You know, if you're trading in and out, that's six trades across the origin period. So some people may be trying to do two trades with Moses in 
for the Origin period, but there's every chance that they make as many points in the three games that they play that Moses will play in the four games he'll play because even though he plays 13, 16, 19, uh, Paramount have a buy round 14 and round 18. So when you weigh that up in that sort of period, I don't think Mitchell Moses is the right move. Cody Walker at number nine is the right move. Obviously, he plays around 13 and 19, just like we talked about with Damian Cook, um, season-long keeper. So if you have him and Dylan Brown in your 5'8", and you don't get to trade Munster back in for the rest of the year, I don't think you'll be too upset. And Ruben Garrick at number 10. So obviously, if you don't have a Sarko, I'd have him higher up. I think maybe Azarko is more popular this week because most people already have Ruben Garrick. Um, and like I said, people that might have been targeting someone like a Lachlan Miller and the like, you know, might just be getting Azarko in as that uh, premium option in the center wing this week. Uh, in terms of the trade outs, so number one on the list is Harry Grant. So a lot of that would be Taming Cook being traded to Harry Grant, which I can understand, you know, obviously there'll be a bit more um, game time during the, the origin period. But, you know, again, it's a trade out. You probably want to trade Harry Grant back in um, sometime later in the season. So if you if you think you can afford the two trades, go for it. But, you know, the trades do run out faster than you'll, you'll imagine if you're not being careful. Nico Hines, number two on the list. So same sort of deal. I guess, you know, he did have that slightly flat performance last week, which people might see, oh, he's going to drop some cash. I'll wait for him to drop. I'll play Moses. But I don't think you're going to get the points overall. So I guess this is all dependent too. If you're doing like head-to-head -head and you are playing the buy rounds, might be a smart play. But, you know, if you're more overall focused or you are not got the buy rounds in your head-to-head, -head, it's probably not worthwhile trading out someone like Nico Hines. Reese Walsh at number three. So I think this is a good trade out option. Um, you know, he, he's started to dip in his output over the last few weeks in terms of super coach. Obviously, still playing well enough to get a run in the Queensland jersey and deservedly so. Um, but yeah, there's there's so many good options at fullback that I don't think Reese Walsh is one that you can carry through the origin period. Uh, Reed Marnie at number four. So. I guess I agreed with a lot of uh, the trade out, the trade ins, but not agreeing with a lot of the trade outs. Um, again, probably a few people going from him to to Damien Cook, but after this week, the Bulldogs, along with the Sharks and the Tigers, have really great buy coverage. They cover around sixteen and nineteen. You can't go too crazy with them because they all three teams have the buy in round seventeen. Yeah, after round sixteen. So you do have to be mindful of that. But in saying that, you know, if you can hold Reed Marnie this week, maybe if you've got Marnie and Grant, you might look at trading one out. But in that case, I'd probably suggest Marnie over Grant. Um, but Reed Marnie could be a really good hold through the back half of the origin period. Val Holmes at number five. So obviously playing for Queensland. Uh, Cowboys play round 13 and round 16 which would mean that, you know, you're missing a couple of games there from Holmes. I think they have the buy around 15 too from memory. I should have looked that up before we started. Um, yeah, so Val Holmes, I think, is an easy trade-out if you're looking to, to get a number this week. Cam Murray, also, I think, a good trade-out. Playing Origin, um, so we'll miss this week. We'll miss round 19. Um, and I was being a bit down on form in terms of super coach scoring, so... Yeah, he's one I'm definitely looking to eye on the run home after the origin period. Uh, but for now, I'm happy to let him pass. Zach Hosking, I think, is a perfect sort of trade-out. You know, you've made your money with him. Um, well, actually, you haven't made that much, as it turns out. He's 70 grand up at the moment. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you've got him, trade him out. There's better options. Brandon Smith's injured, so absolutely, if you've got him, now is the time to let him go. Ryan Madison, long-term injury, again, perfect time to let him, or not perfect time, but the time to let him go. And Isaiah Katoa was the last one on this list. So initially, in my initial sort of reflection on the, the 
upcoming round, I had Katoa out. I uh, just thought, you know, if Milford's on the bench and potentially taking minutes from him and then his cash has peaked, might be the time to get off him. But as we just said, with Nikarima going to fullback, Milford's playing in, in the six. So I think Katoa holds his spot, plays 80. Um, you know, he won't set the world on fire, but if you've got other problems elsewhere, you trade them out first. You know, Katoa is a bit of a luxury trade if you've got the ability to do so. All right, and so captaincy options for this week, which will be pretty interesting because I don't know if everyone always updates their teams <laughs> at this time. I have left it pretty late on Thursday before the first game, so potentially we're on here. We'll look at everyone first just to see. So you can see the most popular captain is still Nico Hines, which suggests that, uh, you know, a lot of teams haven't changed yet. Uh, but Dylan Brown, surprisingly, 10% of teams, that's a pretty interesting share. I think, that, you know, the fact that, uh, yeah, that's the, the highest count we've got so far uh, means that, you know, you can really go with some point of difference options this week. And, and you know, really, if you pick right, it's really going to help your, your overall Cody Walker at number two, because I guess we're not counting Nathan Cleary. Um, yeah, you know, if you've got him, he could be a really good option. Ruben Garrick, that's that's a bit more of a pot option, I think. Um, you know, he has shown the ability to, to score a bit flat, but, you know, if Manly do play well and score well against Newcastle, Ruben Garrick will probably inevitably be involved. Mitchell Moses, I guess if you've got him at halfback, you've, you've backed him in over one of the two guns. I think you almost have to captain him, don't you? <laughs> Put some respect on his name. So, yeah, so he's owned by 10%. And half of those people or thereabouts have captained him. So I guess, yeah, if you're going to bring in a halfback, you probably want him to, to score big. Jermaine Hopgood, number seven, so nice option. Uh, in terms of captain, you know, that solid base option as captain. Uh, Latrell Mitchell, obviously a few people not uh, changed their captain yet. Ponga, 2.3%, so about 20% of the people that have brought him in, captain him, very interesting. And Sean Johnson at number 10. So, you know, I guess, again, another situation of you, you've gone a pod halfback, you're, uh, you're fully backing him in. Uh, a couple of interesting ones. Maybe Fnall Blake, 1.7% of everyone. Interesting. <laughs> couple of people, yep, still got the old ones on there. Yeah, uh, Damien Cook at 1.2%. I thought he might be a bit higher, if I was being honest. Um, but, yeah, there you go. All right, so that's all well and good, but how does that affect my team? Uh, good question. <laughs> So I think the first thing we'll do is always get the right players on the field to see what we're working with. So, you know, got the full forward pack happening. Oh, can't get them going. Obviously, we don't have a halfback this week, but we're okay with that. I should just reset the bench as well so we don't get too confused. Nickel clock start. And obviously, Turbo is not playing, so we can leave him off for the time being. Well, actually, we'll bring him on because probably the first trade we're going to do is to trade out Tommy Turbo. So a bit tra bit weird trading out a guy who's just scored 165. Uh, but as I said, it's one of those things, if you, you believe in the pick and you're going to trade him out, trade him back in, it could be worth the two trades. I think this is the prime example because... He doesn't play this week, but he also doesn't play next week. Um, he does play round 15, then doesn't play round 16, assuming he's going to continue playing for New South Wales. So the question is then, do you bring him in round 15, or can you wait till round 17? Um, and actually, before we commit to that... Yeah, so if you have a look, his break-even is negative one, so you know, pretty much whatever he scores is going to push his price upwards. Uh, in round 15, they play the Dolphins at four pines. So I'm actually leaning towards trading him in. Um, so 
whoever I'm sort of bringing in here is probably going to go back out in two weeks time. Um, so in saying that, who I am going to pick is further down the list. I'm going to bring in Caleb Potter. Uh, so I guess he's nice negative break even. I can't I'll have to find him in the list <laughs> of all the players. Um, don't know. Because he missed games too. So he'll be a fair way down the list, won't he? Uh, all right. We, we won't worry about that. But he... Actually, I can click on him here, can't I? Yeah, so he also has a negative break even. Plays Manly this week. Uh, he also doesn't play around 14, so the only sort of uh, disappoint or issue in this plan um, is that, you know, he'll only get one week of scoring before I trade him in or trade him out. However, he does have the option of moving to 5-8. So the 5-8 position is going to be pretty important for me in the next few weeks. And once we've done the trades, we'll sort of look at why that is. Um, but that's the first trade I'm going to do. So... If we make that trade, you know, oh, hang on, oh, I've still got Preston on the field. So, yeah, so I've got full forward pack now on field. Obviously, don't have a half back, but we do have two five eights. So, you know, Katawa's in here essentially. So, you can see we still need to fill one more slot to get 13 players for this week. So, you know, we could look at trading someone else out and playing another bench spot but you know all these players I have reasons for holding so I think it ultimately comes down to one of my centre wings I want to trade out so whether it's Alamotti, Manu, Peachy or Smith so the obvious one is Joe Manu with his sort of injury we don't quite know how long he's out for he should be back next week but you know even then is he fully fit um that sort of thing. And obviously he has a lot of money available, which is nice. Tyron Peachy, Billy Smith and Alamotti, you know, if we look at their break-evens, they're all pretty nice. I like, can't see this week because he's on the buy. I think it's going to be the same with Smith. Yeah, so... Can I, if, will Sharp if I go on the list? Let's find out. No, it's just reverted to zero because they're all on the buy. But if we, if we do look at them all, you know, based on their current price and their, their rolling three-round averages of 58, 40, 55, you know, they've all got a bit of money that they're going to make. So, you know, the, it's all much of a... Oh, click on thing there. <laughs> so it's all much of a muchness in terms of which one of these guys we trade out. And so I think when we look at it, alamotti has got the better buy coverage, playing 16 and 19. These guys play around 16 as well, but not 19. Um, Peachy has the dual position, and ultimately we want to sort of get him back up into the second row so that we can swing him with Lamu Elu as required. So for that reason, and I've just brought him in, and this position's been a bit of a nuisance in Supercoach side, and probably will be ne probably the position we trade out next week as well. Uh, but I'm going to trade out Billy Smith, so... You know, we do, I don't think we necessarily need his cash. When you look across the squad, we're doing pretty well for cash generation. Um, and, you know, it's just about getting points on the board this week. So for that reason, I'm going to bring in Asako. You know, Dolphins are pretty decent in attack. He's the one that kicks the goals. It's usually the one on the end of a lot of the tries. So, you know, we'll back him in to get the points this week. So I made that trade. And we've got our we've got ourselves thirteen playing players now. So then, when we look at the team, we want to sort of have a look at well, where can we potentially improve? We've got, you know, a decent hooker in Robson. We could trade to Cook. We've got a trade up our sleeve. Maybe, you know, we've got Tarpany and Greg. Um, you know, Tarpany's obviously a keeper. Greg is not so much a keeper, but the reason we brought him in is he does cover all of the buys. But Harris and Ford, you know, the two workhorses at the Warriors, they'll be some nice base for us. And we've got Schuster, who's currently 
on his way to make a bit of cash for us. So we're happy with that. Dylan Brown's a keeper. Azarko Garrick, well, Azarko, we, you know, we've sort of got a plan for that position next week anyway. But uh, Garrick, Lemuelu, we're keeping. Nickel Clockstad, you know, he's fine. He, we like his work rate. He's going to get some big scores eventually. And we've obviously just brought Ponga at fullback. So the one I skipped over is Katoa on the bench. All right, so he hasn't really scored us a lot in terms of points this season. Um, so, you know, we, we've always just held him as that slow-burning option, wait to play around 13. But now around 13 is here. You know, we do have the potential to maybe do a bit better. So what we could do with this trade is trade out Katoa, swing Schuster across, and then at the moment we're leaning towards Bryce Cartwright. So obviously his job security is quite good given Lane and Madison both injured for a few weeks. Um, you know, they've brought Joe Offer and Goway into the side, but he's he's in there to help the middle rotation. So, you know, he's not bothering Cartwright in his job security. Um, so, so if we did want to use a trade, this is where it would be. So we'll confirm that. But then I guess the issue with this lies in our 5-8 slot here, or even both 5-8 slots. Because we've got Trister and Brown, you know, decent. But next week, Parramatta, Manly, and also Newcastle are on the bye. Which means we can't play Dylan Brown, we can't play Schuster. And even through trading anyone else, we can't play Ponger. So for this reason, I don't think, like even though we would probably score more points with Cartwright, I think the smart play is to actually save a trade there. So if I update the trade, uh, bring back Schuster, and bring back Katoa, and we'll just keep hold of the trade. So this way, we've still got a 5-8 for next week in Katoa. Um, and then, yeah, we can obviously work around the likes of playing Buller at fullback. Katoa will play 5-8. Uh, we've got enough coverage for those other players that are playing um, in, or having the buy, sorry, in round 14. And so, yeah, so what that means for next week, our number one trade target is Kiraz. So 486k. So, you know, we get out of probably Masako. Well, we, yeah, no, well, we want to hang on to Alamotti. So it could even be like a Jackson Ford, perhaps, depending on how he goes. And, you know, that could get us the swing of Peachy up into the center wing to bring Kiraz in. But then we are sort of carrying six gun center wings. We probably only want five. So truth be told, it probably will be a Sarko that goes back out. Unless, you know, he goes absolutely bonkers this week. Then it might have to be CNK. We'll just sort of play that by ear. You know, as to, to who gets the, the axe. It could always be an injury. God forbid. Um, yeah, so that, that's sort of one move we want to make. Uh, and then, yeah. So, you know, look. A lot of people would say, well, go Robson to Cook. But Robson will also play the round 16 by. So I think if anything, the play is to trade Robson after that to Cook. Um, or the other option with that is to wait for Marnie's price to dip. He'll, Marnie will play 16 and 19, and then we'll, we'll trade in there. So that, that's sort of the thought process anyway, um, and, and where we're at. So in terms of captain and vice captain for this week, um, you know, I think Dylan Brown is a good chance against the Cowboys. Obviously, the Cowboys haven't been going too flash. Um, so we'll back him in. And then for the captain, we're going to go a bit safe this week. And Tohu Harris. You know, should play big minutes against the Broncos. Broncos packs, you know, a bit decimated with Flegler, Carrigan, Haas all out. So it uh, could be a good afternoon out for the Tohu. Alright, so just check we've done everything else good. So yeah, we've got 13. 
you know, if you've got more than 13, uh, congratulations. <laughs> you've got the luxury of, you know, not worrying about a, a score like a seven from Katoa uh, and the like. But, you know, when I look across the players I've got on the bench that aren't playing, I've got reasons for hanging on to them. So not too stressed. All right, but in saying that, as always, if you do have any thoughts uh, on the team, uh, or you know maybe an option that I might have missed, feel free to to uh, add it in the comments. If you're enjoying the the Super Coach content, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, you know, and let YouTube know about it, so that they'll keep letting other people know about it. Uh, and other than that, thanks very much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.